We sing hallelujah to you, O oh God. We sing hallelujah to you, O oh God. We sing hallelujah to you. We join the angels hey, and the elder to sing hallelujah to you, O oh God. We lead our worship, receive our worship. Let me come to you. Hallelujah. Worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you are excited like me in the house, come on, give the Lord a glorious clap. Hallelujah. Amen. On your way to your seat, just tell yourself, I am blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come on, let us clap for the best choir in the world. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Amen. All right, I, I just have a very... Um, short time to do what I have to do and I'll be out. Praise the Lord. You know, this morning we, I'm talking about, you know, our identity in Christ. You know, identity in Christ. Uh, my mother has said that when, a, when purpose is not known, that abuse is inevitable. Praise the Lord. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. You know, and the issue of identity for us as Christians is something that speaks to the purpose of our existence. And that's why we need to, you know, dive into it so that we can live our life, you know, aright. Because we understand that the kingdom is not time based, kingdom is not time based, it's eternity. So after we finish our work on this earth, after we live our life, we will leave the time and we will go back to eternity. And that's why Paul said, Paul said that, you know, I have finished my race. So what remained for me is a crown where we will dwell with our king forever and ever. So there is need for us to understand, you know, our root, where we come from, so that it can help us guide what we do and how we do it. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Our identity in Christ. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Praise God. Please, can I get King James, please? I don't. TPT. All right. Please give me King James. Amen. It says, now I say that, that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth not from a servant, though he be lord of all. Verse 2. And he said, but is under tutor and governors until the time appointed by the father. We must understand that the love of the father is always intact. The love of the father does not wave. The love of the father is intact. But the father cannot commit the things of the kingdom to the child. Because the child has not gone through process. Praise the Lord. So the father 
withholds it. Just like I cannot buy my five-year-old child a car. Because the car will destroy him. Not that because the car is more valuable than the child, but because the car will destroy the child. So what I will do is that I'm, I will withhold it. So the father, on the account of his love for you, withhold certain things from you. And we understand that the kingdom is all about process. The kingdom is not time-based. The kingdom is process-based. And process is determined by your level of growth, which determines your identity in Christ. Did you hear me? I will say it again. That the kingdom is not time-based. The kingdom is process-based. And process determines your growth. And your growth determines your identity in Christ. So the level of the process you have gone through with God determines the, your identity that you will have. Now, there are different cadres of growth. Because of time, I might just touch a few of them this morning. The first one is, if, is the individual strand that starts from the child, grows to a son, and you grow to a father. It starts from a child, you can grow from a child, you grow to a son, and from a son, you grow to a father. And we have the corporate strand, which starts from a citizen, and you can grow to a representative, which is, in the world, is called ecclesia. You grow to a representative, then you now grow to a witness. A witness is the same thing as a martyr. Now, when your identity grows to the level of a martyr, that means that you are ready to die for the things of the kingdom. You not only believe it, you not only stand for it, but you are ready to die for it. And when we are born into the kingdom, we are born as a citizen, not a member. Members have privileges, but citizens have rights. Everyone enjoys privileges. The sun shines on everyone. Everyone enjoys the goodness of God. But it's not everyone that has rights. It is those that have been born into God that has rights. So when we're born again, when we give our life to Christ, we are now born into God and we now have rights. So when I'm coming to God, I'm not coming as a member I'm coming as a citizen because as a citizen of the kingdom, I have rights. I have authority to address sicknesses. I have authority to address abnormality. I will speak to those things that are not right because I am, I am a citizen of the kingdom and I speak to it. This is how it will be. I am not a member. I don't beg. Praise the Lord. When I come, I make demands as a citizen. When I have the identity of a citizen in Christ, I don't beg. I make what? I make demands. I take. I take. I don't beg. I take. Because I am a citizen. I exercise that full right. I can speak to the mountains. You mountains, be plain. Because I am a citizen. But when I grow from being a citizen and I become a representative, at that point, I am now taking up responsibility my identity in Christ changes. Because a citizen is number-based, 
But a representative of the kingdom is responsibility based. For example, the Roman kingdom, when a Roman kingdom wants to take over a, a territory, they usually send three representatives, three agents. One from the military, one from the legislators, and one from the executive who represents the king. So you have Herod, you have Pilate, and you have the centurion. So they both go to that new territory. And what they do is that they bring all the Roman laws in that territory. Colonize that law. Subdue the people to understand the Roman law and how Roman does their thing. Until that territory becomes a replica of the Roman Empire. Ecclesia. That's what representatives are. So when we grow as being a citizen of the kingdom and we become a representative at that point, that is when God can say, my son, my daughter, I am giving you a, rep a, a, a responsibility to go to a, a new territory and model what you know about the kingdom. At that point, our identity changes as Christians. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And as we grow in the Lord, and you become a representative, when you soak yourself in the work of the kingdom, you are being, everything about you is all about the kingdom. At that point, you now start checking your life. And your work with God, which is more important, you discover that the work becomes more important than your life. You put more relevance to the work of God, to the things of God, than to your life. The, ass the assignments that God has given to you becomes more relevant than your life. So at that time, nothing else matters except the work of God. You are now a representative. You are, your identity in Christ is changing. That at that point, you, ha, you are ready to, to die for the things of God. And when I, when I mean the dying, I don't mean slaughter. I mean you are giving up self. Nothing else matters. That in your work with God, everything does not determine, everything does not determine your work with God. But your work with God determines every other thing. At this point, you don't give excuse. At this point, you don't give excuse by your work, by your family, by whatever it is. Because you are now working as, as a witness of the gospel. That becomes your identity. And everything, everything is now subject to your work with the Father. So is 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 you cannot understand why 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 are we comfortable to put ourselves the things we want our pursuit the mundane things more important than the work of the father it is because our identity is at a certain level because you know that the work can go on without you hello church come on talk to me you know the work can go on without you so some can say, ah, my work is to come to church and worship God. Hello? God does not, God, there is worship going on. God has it enough. Do you know that in heaven right now, there, there is concert going on? The angels and 24 elders, they are singing worship. They are singing hallelujah. You know, those days, they, somebody said he, he got the revelation of the song that is being sung in heaven. 
And when I heard it, that song had not left my head. He says that the angels are singing, ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, ah. And I wonder, how did you get this song? But they are singing hallelujah. There is worship. Bible says, if you will not worship me, I will raise up stones. Things will worship him. The trees, the airs, the mountains, they all bow to him, they worship him. So what does the father want? That means the work can go on without you. But let me remind you that you are nothing. You are nothing without God. There is nothing that you are without God. So God will not commit things in your hand more than the level of your identity in him. So, that thing you're asking God, calm down. You, you might ask from now till tomorrow. But because you are not yet there. So, stop, stop praying, bro. There is a version that God will bless, no matter how you do it. Because he loves you. He will not kill you. So, there is, there is, there is an identity you have to get. To be able to have that prayer that you are praying. That thing you are asking God for. God is watching you. Okay. Keep on praying. Until you grow to that identity, that level in him, you would never receive that thing. Because if you are a child, there are things that a child cannot do. No matter how God loves him. There are things a child cannot do. That there are processes a child cannot go through. So we now see a child. That's, that's why we don't allow children to get married. We don't allow children to marry. We only allow sons and men to marry. Because if we allow children to marry, we will be coming to separate quarrel in the house and every day. Unless you grow to the, to the identity of a son or a father. The same thing with a citizen. Because the kingdom is not controlled by emotions. It's not controlled by time. It's controlled by process. That there are certain things that, that God cannot hand over to you because of the level that you are. So it's not about time. You can spend 30 years in the church and somebody will come in one year and the person have embraced the process and allowed the process to go through him. And God will make that one year person an elder to you that is 30 years. That's your identity. So you wonder how come pastor is not seeing me. <laughs> it is the degree of the process that you have allowed to work in your life. That would determine your level of work. See, there are people who will give role to in church and they will mess it up. What is your identity? It's process based, not, not time. God will help us this morning. We're just starting. <laughs> that our identity that our life give expression to is based on our growth level as a result of the process that we have gone through the identity that our life give expression to is as a result of the growth level that we have praise the lord so first, we must understand who is a child. Who is a child? A child is one that have understood the finished work of Christ and have embraced it totally. So three things. The first thing the child has is that the child has an identity in God and not in himself. The child has 
an identity in God and not in himself. Number two, a child believes and relies completely on the love of the father. Nothing more, nothing less. Then number three, a child has come into rest with God. So the boldness of a child is not based on how strong he is. It's based on the strength of the father, of who the father is. So when a child is talking, he's not talking based on his own strength, but because his strength is on the father. So the child does not define himself in himself. But he defines himself based on the relationship he has with the father. So when we say, I am strong, it's not my power. It's based on God. That is a child. So when you see a child, you see a man who has, who, 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 who has dependency on God. A child does not trust in himself. A child does not believe in, in himself. That is one of the secrets of the kingdom. A child relies on God. Because that identity is being given to us by Christ. That we are children of God. And we get that identity in Christ when we become a child of God. When we are born again. The Bible says that we are now of what? We are of God. We are of God. We are born of God. John says you are of God. Little children. You are of God. The book of James chapter 1 verse 18. And he says, of his own free will. James 1 18. He said, of his own free will. As he begotten us. He begat us of his own free will. That we will be a type of the first fruit of his creation. So we are not strangers. We have an identity in Christ. So when I come to Christ, I am bold. When I pray, I pray as a child of God. That is my identity. I don't come to God and I'm saying, God, if you are willing. Willing how? We know his will. That's why we have come. There is boldness that we have. There is what a child has. I have three, I have four kids, two of them. The two last one, my God. These children, they, they don't knock. You know when you knock, you knock with here. These children, they bang the door. They bang it. So when I say go, go, I want to have a me time. Me and my wife. I will hear bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. The same wife that say we should lock the door will tell me, man, go and open that door. I will say, but they are not knocking. These children are banging this door. Three years, five years. By the time I go to the door and I open the door, yes, I will just open it small. They will push it open. <laughs> and they will just enter. Like... <laughs> Jeremiah will say, what is happening here? <laughs> daddy, 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 daddy you, you, you lock the door. And I will look at them like this. In my own room, they exercise the authority because they are children. Yesterday, I was trying to read. They were knocking. I said, please, can I read? I said, I will not open. The three-year-old started singing, Daddy, open the door. I did not answer. Next thing I heard was, Daddy, where the pampa? Only me, by myself, I went to open the door. I said, come in. I said, please, Wesley, I want, daddy wants to study. Can you allow me? He said, okay, when you finish, we'll come back. <laughs> that is the boldness that children have. 
We don't come to God and say, God, please hey, help, help me. Hey, Daddy, please, can I have breakfast? No! They say, where is the breakfast now? I am late. Because there is an identity that we have. When God, when God, when, when God gives you an identity, people, let us use it. Let us use it. And when we pray, we pray like children because the enemy is watching. When he sees that you don't know your identity, the enemy rushes in. Praise the Lord. My time is up. (laughs) Our identity as a child. I would have loved to speak about the child and tell you the bad side of the child. But we must know that the love of the Father gives us that, that, that grace. It gives us that entrance that we need. Because he is the Father. And when the child is speaking, the child speaks with all boldness. There is complete trust in that child. Some years back, I was in my, in my second year in school. They were asked us to come and collect our exam docket. And I, and I didn't like rushing. So I just allowed people to rush. Maybe two days after, I went to the man's office and I said, ask, can I take my docket? The man looked at me. He was so angry. He said, why are you just coming now? And with, with the, the child was there. I think the child was in ISL. So the, the child came after school. And the man did not answer me. But I stood there because I, I wanted the exam docket. If not, I will not write it. While I was there waiting, the boy came and told me, can you beat my father? My father will beat you. Are you strong like my father? My father will beat you. I just kept quiet. After all, the man is already flogging me. But I know that if they leave me and the man one on one, if I hold the man's hand and he will start running, the man will fall down. But because of what I wanted, I said, No, your father can beat me. <laughs> but there is boldness in the eyes. There is this. Have you ever passed and you are hearing, My father will buy the old Lagos? I have heard you say, My father will, will, will buy an aeroplane, will buy everything. That is the confidence of a child. And that's what we should have as Christians. Knowing that the earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof. Everything we can think of, the Father is able to do it and do it for us. Let us pray this morning. Identity of a child. Larabu Shetili Kadabusha Zili Brali Kalabashutuli Balakadabasha. I don't know what you want to tell God this morning, but maybe it's just time for you to just. You know, remember again who you are to the Father. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay updated with everything that we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We see you, sir.